Welcome to a new season of Ability Assistance. My name is Phyllis Jones, Chair of the North Andover Commission on Ability Assistance. And my name is Stacy Leibowitz. I'm the Secretary of the North Andover Commission on Ability Assistance. Our guest today is former State Representative and founder and director of Policy and Partnerships of Maternal Mental Health Leadership Alliance, Jamie Belsito. Jamie, welcome. welcome. Good morning. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Our now, pleasure. You, <laughs> I, what you've put together is fantastic. And the first question I always ask is, why this particular issue? It's a question I get often mm -hmm. when um, people realize that I'm the founder and not just the policy person. Uh, and I'll just say in my Reader's Digest abridged <laughs> version of the story, <laughs> I had two wonder twin powers. That's a reference from back in the 70s. Oh, yes, I, I, I know it. that. <laughs> Hopefully, I get, now I can hear it in my head. <laughs> members of the audience, I hope we'll have to get the get the reference we're, we're as well. Ourselves. Yes, <laughs> just That's a little okay. bit. Those were those were good shows. They were good <laughs> shows, and they were on Saturday morning. Yes. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> and so, as a proud Gen Xer, I will reference that <laughs> and say, I have always been in the policy space. Went to Salem State as a political science yep. major. Um, loved kind of understanding global governments and took that and ended it up in the immigration space for about oh. 17 years immigration policy. Okay. Which we can have another session on, <laughs> on that at a later time. That will be a totally <laughs> different <laughs> show. <laughs> yeah. Different show. Different, different show. show. And by way of my own lived experience with mental health challenges, not with just my first one, with but with both of my daughters. Right. Completely different experiences mm -hmm. um, because mental health doesn't present in one way, right? That's Challenges true. don't present That's in true. one way. They're a spectrum. And the more I started to dig into my experience and my challenges, the more I realized how common the complication was. Yep. And we can get into that in our conversation. But what I did with my Wonder Twin Powers was <laughs> took my lived experience along with my policy background. Yep. Because regardless of the issue, it's the same way to approach changing policy. And I Absolutely. wanted to see positive policy outcomes for pregnant and postpartum birthing people and women and their families. And so here I founded the MMHLA, because it's much shorter than the Maternal <laughs> Mental Health Leadership <laughs> Alliance, in 2019. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been doing a lot of great things. So I thank you for having me here. Absolutely. No, we're thrilled. And I've got to say, from one poli sci major to another. <laughs> yes, yes. So many people are like, oh, that's just pre-law. And it's like, no, no. politics <laughs> is a science government but yeah it's that was science. actually my my concentration my my major was communication okay. minor was poli size so it's yes. the same so we're same we're conversation we are all in the same boat <laughs> and I guess that leads to the next question yes. is tell us about the organization exactly. and what your priorities are thank you so much yeah, the, the organization was founded on the basic <clears throat> fact that policy can change people's lives for right. the better yes and so we are here focused on health equity, racial equity, and making sure that our elected leaders yes. are able to see this as an issue that is affecting one in five women or birthing people, that it is the number one complication of all pregnancies, that it is yeah. temporary, treatable, and one of my favorite P words, preventable. And yeah. the other interesting part about this and the work that we've been doing on this particular issue, because it was maternal health, we have the highest maternal mortality rates in the industrialized world, we have terrible mm -hmm. mental health challenges, parity is all we're talking about, especially right now in right. Congress, although I'm pretty sure we've been talking about it for 40, 50 yes, years yes. now. <laughs> Just across the board. Across the board <laughs> access, and then there was infant health, and the impact of parents who are suffering from mental health complications without having resources and what the impact on that child is. So very small intersection of these issues, maternal mental health, and through policy we have found it's the number one reason, not only in the country, but in this state as well, mm -hmm. for maternal mortality in the first year of birth. Suicide, use, and self-harm, number one leading cause of maternal mortality. You know, when I hear things like that where it's also so high in the Commonwealth, you sit back 
and you think of Massachusetts, not to get political, right? but you think of Massachusetts as this forward thinking, always there in advance kind of state. Yes. Right. And, you know, the fact is, is we're not <laughs> always. <laughs> we are in some degrees. I mean, FMLA was based upon what started here in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. That's right. But we can't just wear that one little hat. You know, we have to grow upon it. So my question to you is <laughs> this. You see these numbers. Yes. You know as a former state rep, thousands of pieces of legislation cross <laughs> your desk on almost a daily basis. And there's no way, whether it be at the state level or the federal level, you can know everything. That's right. Mm -hmm. So how are you lobbying this so that people in the real world mm -hmm. and also on, on the political spectrum, for lack of a better term, are understanding what this is and, and how to really bring it to light? So thank you for the question. And I think the power that we as individuals have, and obviously Stacy and Phyllis, you both know, is the power of advocacy. Yes. yes. That is something anyone can do even if it's talking to their neighbor about an issue of, that is being affecting, right. that's affecting them as an individual, as a family, in your school, uh, in your community, and that's how we came to this issue. So we are officially a 501c3, so I don't lobby. I'm just putting that out like this. <laughs> okay. Way. You appreciate that, right. Attorney Jones. And <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> you know, took to Capitol Hill. Actually, before mm -hmm. I even founded this in 2015, 2016, I went down to Capitol Hill, and I am a former lobbyist down there, by the way, <laughs> having worked in the immigration okay. space. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's so much intertwining. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is. And there's opportunity to, to use your lived experience right. to yes. influence. So I was going down for a birthday party. A friend of mine was turning 40, and I said, you know what? I've kind of done this before. I've hit the hill. Let me put on my comfy shoes and go knock on a few doors and see if anyone's talking about this And you really need right. those issue. comfy shoes. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. Don't wear heels <laughs> on the, in the halls of no, Congress. No. Your feet will not like no, you. No. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and so going back to Massachusetts, which was so interesting is that then newly elected during special, uh, now vice chair, actually, I think she's even higher than that, but Catherine Clark had been okay. newly elected yeah. Okay. Yeah. into office. And she brought something we did in Massachusetts, which she had been state rep and state senator and now yep. was the congresswoman. She brought a five, I think it was four and a half page piece of legislation to introduce on maternal mental health issues mm. based on what we were seeing, a program work here in Massachusetts, okay. which was called and is called the Massachusetts Child Psychiatry Access Program for Moms. Okay. Based I've, on the I've child psychiatry. Been, yeah. I've never yeah. even played. Right? Again, communications. Exactly. Getting, the, getting the word. <laughs> yeah, getting Which the word where, out. Where we founded right. this show. Okay. Um, and we're a well over 25 episodes and Five, Actually, I think over 30 at this point. Yeah, and, and we're, we're five or six years into yeah. this show for that and exact sharing reason. sharing the information. To share this information because otherwise... You don't know what you don't know. You don't exactly. And even having, you know, social media, you just don't know where these things are buried. And hearing buried. this buried. and then having that kind of spur a different conversation and, you know, another nonprofit and more information because people don't know. So and I'm, having I'm that. thrilled to hear yeah. what you're saying now about, yeah. about this helpline. Please go yeah. on. Yeah. Yes, yes. And you know, and <laughs> I did, I will say, I brought my handheld computer with me. So there are <laughs> a couple of the things that I, I want to, to reference and, sure. and we can share. Most definitely. Uh, thank you so much. And by, but by way of advocacy and just going and knocking on doors, we found oh. out that people had lived experience in Congress little comma here it's why I always feel the more women that are represented in our legislature right. the better that's another conversation for yeah. another yes time. it is I will volunteer to be <laughs> on that many panel. of them have lived experience they have lived experience yes they've been there done that yeah. they've given birth 
they've experienced what those challenges are. Yeah. Um, one member who's no longer there in a bipartisan nature we worked with was Republican uh, Jamie Herrera Butler, whose child was born, and she knew going into as the birth went along, her child had no kidneys. And oh, so God. that challenge, and the child's fine now. Her baby is, I don't want to say 10, and, and healthy Fantastic. and doing well. Um, but she realized through her own lived experience, you know, these are challenges families are going through. Right. With a child that ha ha has a disadvantage physically out the gate, and then how do we make the system more navigable for folks, and then the impact on what on that her. is yeah. for the parent. So through, through Ed Markey's office and Catherine Clark's office, we were able to take this issue, elevate it, get a program, first time ever, modeled on a telepsychiatry access program. Wow, for that's doctors. Amazing. That's amazing. So if someone's presenting with mental health issues, they're pregnant or postpartum, you don't have to be the expert. Right. And you don't have to go, oh, I can't, I can't work with my patient. I'm just going to look the other way. You know what? Stacy looks to me like you're having some challenges. Guess yep. what? Number one issue, number one complication in all pregnancies, not just you. Yeah. And we're going to talk about this. We're destigmatized. No, you're going to, you're not alone. I'm going to pick up the number. We're going to get you a doctor. We're going to connect you to services. And we've been able to do that now. Twelve states have these access That's amazing. lines Wonderful. now. That's amazing. Now this show actually, believe it or not, has national reach because of the way I do believe that. It's yeah. put on cable cast app by North Andover Cam. Mm -hmm. And we have it on Podbean as well. So this show has nationwide oh, reach. So social media reach. What yep. states? So that if I live in a different state or I have a, a friend or whatever, what states? Let me get that information for you. And while I'm getting that information, because it's incredible, we went back to the to Congress last year. So the iteration is 2016. We got the bill passed for five million dollars. Seven states received funding that we went and got the appropriations for the next That's year. Great. And then we were able to work in language for a national maternal mental health hotline. Is that the one eight three three? TLC Mama. Thank you. <laughs> Phyllis, thank you. That's that's amazing. Thank you so much. That's amazing. You're We've, lucky I re don't even yeah. remember my <laughs> own phone number. How <laughs> much you remember this? Yes. 1833 TLC Mama and you can text cuz we know a lot of yeah. different generations coming up, you know, outside of our fabulous generation Gen X who <laughs> invented text, yes. right? Um, but some folks don't want to pick up the phone and call. But yeah. I always found my challenges were Two in the morning, no one's awake, yeah. the baby's not sleeping. Yeah. You're, who you're, do you reach for? Who am I reaching out yeah. to? I feel so alone. I think it's just me. Yeah. You're not. And you're that's not. The so you have that thing hotline. when it comes to A, mental health. Yes. And then B, women. Yes. And, and I don't even know that you could go A, B, but mm -hmm, they're, mm -hmm. they're yeah. you know, intertwined. Yes. Right. You need that help in the moment. Yes, you do. And being able to have that, that hotline just like a suicide hotline or any of these other hotlines, there's somebody there, I would imagine 24 hours, who will be able to provide you that support in the moment. And it's true, you may not be able to talk to the husband, or maybe you're a single, That's single exactly. pregnant woman. That's exactly right. There may be these barriers, and you can't wait, like, well, we'll get you an appointment in a few days. Oh, no. And that might be too late. Yeah. So having that is, is critical, and having that now in 12 states is So this impressive. one's actually, I'll, Thank you for bringing that up, and yeah. I'll go back to the 12 states. This is actually 24-7 nationwide. nationwide. That's wonderful. Culturally That's competent, multilingual. Okay. That's, so yeah, that was going to be the next if question. If somebody <laughs> calls and they can only speak Mandarin, you can somehow connect to a language line type yes. of a situation and get an interpreter. Yes. It's new. It's going through some, you know, iterations as we right, always right. see, but there's always someone there. There's right. never... But there's that, progress. There's so. progress and we're working with Congress. They That's realize great. the value add. We here in Massachusetts have had terrible tragedies with maternal health this as past year. As we know Especially in the, in the news past recently. Year, year and yes. a half. Yes. Yeah. It's been yeah. very difficult to, to see that. And again, going back, we try to model ourselves and saying we've done all these things. We actually, going back to your original question, if I put on my legislative hat, I filed a lot of bills last session that my amazing colleagues have picked up and moved forward with yep. were a pregnancy loss leave bill to allow grief for any pregnancy loss, whatever that manifestation is. 
and also maternal mental health and culturally competent workforce, mm -hmm. we are seeing closures of our labor and delivery units and birth centers yeah. all across yeah. the state. Yeah. I know at um, Beverly Hospital, which is where I gave birth to both of my children, and I still use mostly as my, my place to go to, it was the, um, the midwives yes. area that closed down. And now out in Worcester, that whole the situation. Yeah. 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 Because, oh, well, they can go to Worcester. And, and it's, it's scary because where does that leave people, especially if there's an emergency that's happening? And I wanted to add, when you talk about the tragedies that have happened in the past mm. year, for me, listening to the news where there's that opposing side, talk about the stigma with the opposing side, well, you know, they're looking at it from this criminal point of view, well, she knew what she was doing, or they, and in one case where this woman was on so many different meds, That's right. and the lack yeah. of monitoring, I think having that de-stigmatizing view, and understanding what somebody's going through, and making sure, what does the care look like mm -hmm. for somebody going through a pregnancy, and then after that, it's, it's being looked at in a different way so we can prevent this from happening, but God forbid something happens, really what was behind that? That's right. And understanding ways to prevent it as opposed to having more of a stigma because you see that. And then my fear is, will women speak up then mm -hmm. if they're afraid because they're going to be you know, judged and it's like, wow, look at A, B, and C. Exactly. It's very interesting, this conversation you bring up. I know in my own lived experience, I was very hesitant to ask for help because I was yeah. worried that my children were going to be taken away from me. Yeah. There it is. Really? Yeah. And that there is, it is the truth. And when I say that, that is as a married, straight, white woman in the white suburbs of Boston, yeah. Massachusetts, not thinking about, which again, I just want to say, yeah. Part of why I founded the MMHLA, not because I could see policy could help, but if it happened to me, yeah. what did that mean for everyone else? Yeah. Especially the people who fall into disenfranchised populations. Population. That's it. Yeah. And through the data that we're seeing, with all the work that we've done collectively in maternal health, not only is, do we as women get the bottom of the barrel of help and yeah. access, right? And, but and then add the cultural. There you go. Add the cultural. Latino. Black population. Black and brown popula indigenous Black and brown, population. Indigenous population. Yes. Indigenous, yeah, and, and also Asian, you know, mix. Because I, I used to yes. work dealing with adult foster care and okay. in Lowell dealing uh -huh. with mental health. Uh -huh. uh, there was a huge population there. And really the issue of mental health in different cultures, cultures is just not accepted. That's right. Yes. So yes, at being a woman, add the cultural the general, even American way of looking mm, at, mm. you know, our country's way of looking at it, that it's, you keep being pushed to that, as you say, bottom of the barrel, mm. and we have to change that, that conversation. We do, so. and this conversation's part of that, and yes. with the uh, ability assistance, and I'd love to come back on, because uh, I want to touch upon two, one thing. One, I have the 12 uh, recipients, <laughs> okay. so I'd love to talk about that. And then two, with the severe maternal morbidity report that yeah. just came out in Massachusetts, when we take a look at those figures, what was shocking to, to not only me and the state, uh, and the lieutenant governor and the governor, who have absolutely, by way of the administration, leaned into this issue on yep. parents and women's health and, and maternal mental health, and maternal health as well as the AG, yep. is that two things were apparent. Women of color's rates of mortality have doubled here in the bastion of all healthcare yeah, state yeah. and disabilities. They finally n acknowledge yeah, yeah. that mobility, physical and mental mm -hmm. disabilities were acknowledged as having uh, the highest rate yeah. of maternal mortality because, and I have a fact sheet here, approximately 20% of individuals who give birth in the United States identify as having a disability. One in eight births mm -hmm. are women with disabilities. Women with disabilities are twice as likely to experience maternal mental health yep. conditions. And they find that one of the most frequent concerns raised by women with disabilities is a lack of health care professional knowledge and awareness about how their disability could affect their pregnancy or affect their symptoms, progression, yep. and concerns. Yep. And, and, and that's a huge thing because yeah. now let's talk about, you know, I'm very fortunate. My husband, you know, provides 
through through his job fantastic private health insurance I know you have yes. through your job yep. Yep. I'm sure you have somehow through whether it be your husband or, or yes. you know yes. but Mass Health you'd be surprised about how many things are not covered by Mass Health yes. that women need as just baseline are things like this covered by Mass Health? So we've been working on the Mass mm -hmm. Health piece, and fortunately for us, so two things happened last. I think it was last session. Even though you would think this would be obvious, because we live in Massachusetts, we have Mass mm -hmm. Health, but now women are covered 12 months postpartum. Right, that's wonderful. Fully covered that's with the access to, to maternal mental health. Right. And I'll quickly say this: what was very interesting. This is always a bipartisan issue when we look at the large. We live in a little bubble right here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And even sometimes in that bubble, it gets a little cloudy. But if we take a look at the overall, larger, yeah. the overall like um, the 30, partisan, 000 the 30,000 yeah. foot, uh, even in this insane uh, asylum going down in Congress right now, this is an issue where everyone understood that people need to be taken care of and mental health is very important. So under the Baker administration, and I worked with Lieutenant, then Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, who was a mom and mm -hmm. gave birth during her tenure as being a state rep, and, and she, she knew it. She, she knew, knew it. what this issue was, and she said, we are no longer going to put any barriers in women's way. That's why I'm here, to help remove barriers for families yeah. to progress. Mass Health is going to cover these screenings. That's the end of Fantastic. it. Fantastic. And she, they, they as a, as an administration, made that decision, and so that has. Now the question is, is it happening? And that's what and I want. And do wanna, people know about? And, it. and, and that's right. what I want to piggyback a question around that because not even just Mass Health, and, and even beyond coverage, but looking at the education of doctors. That's right. Because you talk about you know, addressing those who are on, you know, the black and brown population, the Latino, when you, you know, you hear reports of women and those dealing with pain or dealing with other health issues, especially pregnancy, that they are not getting the care they need through that process, that they are more on the fringe. So you start off with women again. Mm -hmm. So how are doctors being educated to look for these signs, to talk to women, women who are, like us where living in the suburbs, but you know, looking at Latino, brown, black, any of those populations. Anybody who's disenfranchised. Anybody who reason. may be on that disenfranchised uh, list. So to discuss that, what is being done to educate and make them aware? Because the insurance may be there. That's all fine and good. But if the doctor, but if the doctor isn't, isn't addressing it, it. Yeah. if a tree falls in the forest, does anyone if hear it? Hear it. So that's, exactly. That is something that we as an organization and several other organizations, uh, one in particular is Shades of Blue, a black led organization by an amazing woman, Kay Matthews in Texas, yep. um, and the Black Women's Health Imperative, and uh, other organizations, yep. Mar March of Dimes. Now, this is both locally and nationally. nationally. Okay, so good. this is where we do things well, okay? This is where I'll give, give some snaps out to uh, Massachusetts, <clears throat> and we're doing it even, even better now that we have Mar Healy and Kim Driscoll in there, is that we are identifying that, especially an attorney, an attorney General yeah. Campbell, who's a mom of color and gave birth and said, geez, you know, we need to be out in our communities, in our community health care centers, right. talking about this and letting folks know that there, are, that, there's, that there are support services. And then our current administration with Biden under Kamala Harris has put out a maternal health blueprint and these 12 states, I'll go back, this is one of the, our initiatives that we did at MMHLA and got approved. There were over 10,000 bills filed last year and 271 got through and ours was one of them. That's awesome. So LA That's County, amazing. LA County, which is probably the size of this state, received yeah. one of the grants. <laughs> Colorado, Kansas, Kentucky, New Orleans, Missouri, Mississippi, Montana, That's North amazing. Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, and West Virginia. And that's an interesting cross-section. Yes. And yes, that's it is. really great because you talk I, Mississippi, one of the poorest, if not the poorest in, in the country, seeing that happen gives me hope 
of those building blocks happening across the nation to see that that that's a great cross section. It and, is, and I know I know you're not lobbying. I know you're just yes. right. We're right. advocating. We're, 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 we're sharing you're, information. You're, you're you're advocating. You're sharing. I mean, we follow each other on LinkedIn. Yes, we do. And we do. I've seen you know pictures of you going up to Capitol Hill to be to testify. Yes. To yeah. to inform people who you know again they get three hundred. 500 bills on their desk, yes. you know, every day, and there's no way they can keep up with them. And it, it means something for somebody like you to be able to say, right. hey, look at HR, yes, whatever it is. Right. It does. It does. And really, I think the advocacy part will go back to what we were talking about. And you're right. How do you keep track of all those bills? Yes. It's rapport. And I always call it the whack-a-mole syndrome, like everywhere, <laughs> especially when we were getting this, this issue out in front of people. I swear, people were like, Jamie, Jamie, everywhere they were, I was, okay? And, and that is it. It's making sure that you're, you're out there yeah. and we're focused, very focused on right. one yes. issue. On what that is. What yeah. that is. So when we take a look at why does Mississippi now have a telepsychiatry access rollout that they're going to have so that even rural access, rural America, um, yeah. You know, who can pick up the phone and say, I have a mom who's presenting, yeah. how can we get the resources? Yeah. We, they'll be able to do that. It was based on what we've done well here in the Commonwealth the of Massachusetts. It was the messaging. You That's were able it. to, to yes. do Evidence based programs. It's evidence based, and you knew how to package that in the message. Yes. So it was understandable. And the reality, and I'm a little biased here, but women. Yes. We are the ones that give birth. We are the ones that are going through this. It's more than half the population out there That's correct. who are affected. And so you're speaking to a very large number here. And then even men, they have wives, the daughters, dads. you know, they are sisters. <laughs> so you're speaking That's right. to an entire population that either is going to go through this, has gone through it, um, or know somebody. Going through it. Yep. It's, you know, it speaks to everyone. This is a massive health care concern. Mm -hmm. and, but and you packaged it in a way that it's like, this makes sense. And hopefully, people can agree that this is where help is needed to ensure maternal health, to ensure the health of a child that's, that's being born through this, that, that is being addressed. So it's, you know, I think it's incredible work. It's yeah. as American as baseball and apple pie. <laughs> apple pie. <laughs> you know, I, I remember years ago, you know, my sister-in-law had postpartum depression. Yeah. And my mother-in-law went out to Germany where they were stationed. My brother-in-law was in the military at the time, and they were stationed in Germany. And like so many families do, the eldest mom goes out to help yeah. with the baby That's so right. that... Help the mom. Exactly. And... <laughs> My sister-in-law had such severe postpartum depression mm. that my mother-in-law came home because she was afraid, yeah. and it was more a matter of nobody told anybody. It was like it was a shaming of, yeah. of my sister-in-law. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody said she has postpartum right. depression, and this now shines a positive spotlight right. on what she could have gotten. Right, the help. That's right. Yeah. Thirty years ago, if. That's right. And it's, the it's the destigmatization. It's the destigmatization. Yes. And that's why I, do I quote unquote love, you know, one in five mothers, the number yeah. one complication it's of all pregnancy, lot. the number one it's reason maternal lot. mortality. There's no shame. And I always joke around and say, I thought it was just me. Oh, and then I found out I actually yeah. had a bunch of other yeah. women that were dealing with it too. So it wasn't, I want to speak very quickly to the military right yeah. now. We have yeah. language that went through the NDAA. And we are working on a program for military. 36% uh, of female service members and spouses are at risk yeah. for maternal mental health complications. And so right now, um, we are working with Centering Healthcare Institute, What to Expect Project. And we have a pilot program we're looking to introduce by That's the end great. of November um, that will ensure that all MTFs have the capacity to facilitate a Centering Pregnancy program, support services to reduce maternal mental health and physical health challenges. But it would not only just be in the, in the United States, but at the posts across. That's really important. That's extremely important. Uh, yes. Well, 
Jamie, thank you so much. Yes. I, unfortunately, our time is, it has flew. run down. It flew. it flew. And I think we need to have you back on because there's so much more for us to discuss so we can do a part two. And, and as, yeah. and <laughs> as things progress, we want to know what those update. progressions yeah, we can do an update. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly, but because this, that's the whole point of this program. Yeah. It's nice to know what's here now. But, but you're working on other things yes. and they're going to progress. Yeah. And Thank we'd love to so hear much. about that. This I is such pertinent it. information that we've been able to share today. So Most thank definitely. Thank you again thank for being, being here. You can reach out to Jamie and the Maternal Mental Health Leadership Alliance at their website at www.mmhla.org. And Jamie's email is jbelsito, B-E-L-S-I-T-O, at mmhla.org. And you can also reach the National Maternal Mental Health Hotline at 1-833-TLC-MAMA, which is the same as 833-852-6262. Be sure to post that as well on our Facebook page. Absolutely. I want to say a big thank you to our crew this month from GLTS, Alex Santiago. And we have GLTS alumni, Cassie Buono and John Cafori. Join us next month for two special episodes. Our November guests will be Essex County District Attorney Paul Tucker and State Senator Barry Feingold. In December, we'll be joined by Waystone Health and Human Services. And our January guests will be the Institute for Home for human-centered human. <laughs> design. I maybe should wear those glasses again. We have commitments for this season from the following guests. J Cubed Communication, mm -hmm. the Mass Department of Energy Resources to talk about the Mass Safe program, Dogs for Better Lives, okay. State Auditor Diana DeZaglio. We love her, we can't get rid of her, and we don't want to. <laughs> the Doug Flutie Foundation and State Representative Andrea Ramos. We're constantly looking for new topics to explore here at Ability Assistance, and we would truly love to know what your topics are that you'd love to have more information about. If there's a specific topic that you'd like to learn more about, please email me directly at pjones at northandovera.gov or call me, 978-494-0136. And as I mentioned during the program, you can also watch this not only through your cable stations, mm -hmm. but you can watch it on demand via YouTube, the Cablecast app through Roku and Apple TV, the North Andover Cam website, and everything's also rolled out on Podbean. From all of us here at Ability Assistance, thank you and see you next month. Take care. <laughs>